good afternoon and welcome to the Chartreuse Leprechaun. My name is Mark, your host, and it's time for another episode of Random Game Saturday. Today, well, you know what? As I was preparing for this episode, I came to the realization that we've been doing this for almost six months. Well, technically it's been over seven since we started the whole Random Game series, but most of August and part of September were a bust to the whole COVID thing. So yeah, six months. Amazing how time flies, right? So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, all that fun stuff so you don't miss anything around here. Clearly there's a lot that goes on, but for today's Random Game Saturday episode, we're going retro in case you haven't noticed, and I mean really retro. I thought we'd dive into a selection of old arcade classic games from Atari from like the, uh, like the 1980s. Yeah, you heard me right. Atari from 1980. Maybe even the 70s. I don't remember when all these came out. This is one of those game discs I found when I was cleaning out drawers back in June when I made that tech intervention video. I found uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Six 3 discs. I found this. I found all kinds of stuff. Original disc of the Oregon Trail. I mean, wow, classic stuff. Classic stuff. But this, this particular disc itself is from 1988. I don't remember when I got it. Best guess is early 2000s, maybe. So today we're going to do a sampling of a few games. Uh, the game has six or the disc has six games on it. We'll probably only sample three or four. I wouldn't dare play Pong. Yeah, it just has no appeal to me. We may get the other five in. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I'll warn you now, as if you couldn't tell, the graphics are terrible. OK, they are crap. Uh, and as the game speeds up, things get worse. <laughs> Controlling with a mouse takes a lot of adjustments in your hand boom. It just kind of FYI. Yes, I tried briefly just to get the feel for it. And much like Aim Lab, we'll be doing this in segments. So there will be edit breaks. Uh, not sure how long this will go on. Maybe. Yeah, well, we're going to try for our, our full half hour, just like always. We may bring in something else to fill up some time. Uh, you know, still staying in the retro thing. We'll see. Oh, and FYI, each game comes with a preloaded default set of high scores. I did not play these games and do all of that. I did briefly play a couple of them, just, you know, like I said, to get used to the mouse. And oh boy, uh, <laughs> it's wonky. Anyway, let's get to it. Oh, and uh, fair warning, I have not played any of these games in years other than trying and failing miserably to figure out the mouse control. Uh, I have not actually played some of them at all on the computer or like since the old stand-up console things that they like the one in the on the right there. Yeah, that's uh, that's my history of playing these games. Yeah, and this uh, this first one happens to be one of them. It's called Tempest. I wasn't really that good at it back in the day. Um, yeah, and because of the weird shape, getting your mouse to actually move correctly and move things, yeah, it's a little funky. Uh, and I'm sure you've noticed that the screen for the game isn't really that big. Uh, I don't remember what the resolution is, but one of them is like 600. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. But anyway, this is... Uh, this is interesting. So we'll play on novice. And what you have to do is go around. And kill all these things. And then you get to advance to the next one. Yay, the next one. Woohoo. And getting the mouse to come around to the bottom of this is like really tough. Oops, didn't make that one. And, you, you know, of course, you get points for killing all these things. And they move. Yay, we made it again. Woohoo! Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, and that pink thing that's down there, that actually comes up and splits into multiple ones. Oh, we got them all. Oh my. Yeah, and the uh, the geometric shape for this thing just constantly changes. And I keep trying to get the, the mouse to come around to the bottom of the screen. Oh, what is that? Oh yeah, that yellow, th that, that green thing down there. It... Yeah, that green thing. It comes along and tries to... Uh, 
Whoops. And I think that's it. Yep, game over. So, yeah, the green thing comes along and it takes away when you uh, when you go to advance to the next one. If it's in your way, you die and it shoots at you. So you got to like pummel it down. So, yeah, that was fun. All right. So next up is Centipede. And this is a pretty straightforward game as far as it goes. You can see you got to move around. You got to avoid the mushrooms, the bugs, all that fun stuff. Back in the day, it was kind of a new take on Space Invaders, if you all remember that arcade classic. Um, there's, like I said, not a lot to this one, to be honest, but it's not easy. My one regret about this game is I lost the actual Centipede disc we had at some point. That disc came with the Adventure Campaign version of this game, and I thought it was awesome, personally. But all the game reviewers just kind of considered that mediocre. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look at Centipede here. want to clear the mushrooms out. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we go. We got him. Yay! Get that. Oh, they're dropping mushrooms. I forgot about those. Yeah, they fill the screen up with mushrooms, which makes it, you know, really hard to get around. And there we go. We got that one. Yeah, we're getting them, we're getting them, we're getting them. Hey, hey, we got it. Now, you only have so much room on the screen that you can actually move around in. And until a shot that you make leaves the screen at the top or kills something, uh-oh, you don't, uh, you don't get it back. Or, excuse me, you don't get to shoot again. We need to clear that out. Oh, and it's sped up. Uh-oh. Oops. Yeah. Like I said, it's not exactly easy. Whoop. And I think that's it. Yeah. So that was Centipede. Kind of a fun game. Definitely a challenge if you're into one. It's uh, not as easy as it looks. Next one we're going to take a look at is Super Breakout, and it is quite literally just a new take on Pong. Uh, you move your paddle around, you get it in front of that little white dot, and you make it go up, and the more of those dots you or blocks you knock out, the faster the game goes. This is the one that gave me headaches with the graphics being glitchy while uh, while I was playing as it sped up. But uh, let's uh, let's take a quick look. And left click to typical 80s style game. It doesn't have a lot to it in terms of audio. Yep, there it goes. It's sped up. Oops, did not hit that one right because, ah, I hate it when it goes on those long, long tracks like that. Where is it coming from? There it is. Not you got to work your angles a lot in this game. If you and there's a lot of similar games. Ah, there's a lot of similar games. This one was an early version, kind of a trendsetter with it, if you will. Um, like I said, we're going retro. Retro, folks. And the longer you go, the faster this gets. Yeah, you can see it when it comes off there. Oh, I got it. There we go. Now, it really speeds up when you get into the red area. Ah. Well, there you have it. That is Super Breakout. Pretty I don't even want to say easy game. We got a whopping 29 points on that. Oh, High score is 32, and we got 29. Ha! Huh, how about that? All righty, then. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at Missile Command, and it's kind of fast-paced. In the arcade version, you had a trackball and firing buttons. Not sure how this will work with a controller and a mouse, uh, but we're about to find out, because this is kind of a small screen to work with compared to what I'm 
used to, or what I remember, I guess, is the best way to say it. Uh, you have missiles coming down from up here at random intervals. Uh, you need to destroy them. You want to destroy as many as possible with the missiles you have because you only get a fixed amount from each of your defense pylons. And when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. And you got to keep your cities and bases from being destroyed. If you do that, you get to play another round. Yay! Bonus city every 12,000 points. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we'll find out. See how this works. Where are we here? And... We'll do that, and we'll do that, and we'll do that, and we'll do that. Uh-oh. Missed. Oh, there's supposed to be... I have to... How do I change between bases? Ah, this has... So I've got a... What? Ah, shot that one too low. Yeah, oh, lost a city. No. How did it suddenly go to that base? Huh. I haven't figured out how to change between bases yet. That's not good. That's going to be... Whoa! Lost a city. Uh-oh. Oh, lost a base. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. Oh, jeez. Yeah, see, this is, uh, yeah. All righty, well, let's see what we get here. Yep, we're dead. That's it. Not as easy as it looks. I still haven't figured out how to change between bases. Huh. Interesting. But there you go. That was Missile Command from back in the, I don't know, late 70s, early 80s. I remember playing it on arcades until like the 90s. It was that popular. Yeah, that was uh, some fun times. And last of all, I guess we are going to take a look at everything except Pong. Uh, last of all, we have Asteroids. Now, this was one of the first 360-degree games ever developed. You could move and shoot in any direction. You could go across the screen. You could cross the edge of the screen and come out on the other side, which was usually my downfall because, you know, there's always an asteroid over where I don't want to, you know. Uh, the... Uh, uh, and I sucked at this game. I really did. We are about to find out how badly I still suck at it, too, because I haven't played this on the computer, so I'm not entirely sure how the controls work here, but we are about to find out. Okay, right button moves. What? Oh, crud! Whoops! Yep, that was that. Okay. So, yeah, you get the idea. Oh, 1979 this one came out. Aha! It got me. See, the asteroids come across the edge of the screen, too, just like you do. And... Yikes! Yep. Yeah, it was, uh... It was... Oh, I got a high score! <laughs> Alrighty then, well... Uh... Do that one? 
Uh, oops, no, wait. I want T and where's L? Oops, that was L. I'll be darned. We, we got the high score. What do you know about that? Last of all, today in our trip through Retro Land, uh, we're going to take a look at Sim Isle. Now, this is a game I know is from back in 1995. Uh, it is actually not part of the Sim City franchise, uh, but it was one of the first, actually, I think it might have been the first city builder type sort of game I ever played, and I loved it. Uh, you choose one of several fictional islands with varying amounts of plains and forests and mountains and resources and people. Mostly the islands are largely undeveloped and every scenario has its own objectives and win-lose conditions. You play the game by, you, you actually have to hire people and tell them what to do. And then they have various skills and profiles and you got to take, uh, they, they, you got to combine those in certain ways to accomplish certain jobs and uh, it takes various amounts of time to do each project. Some scenarios are very environmentally friendly and some are sort of environmentally friendly and some are not in any way, shape or form. I mean, there's one, if I remember right, you have to clear cut the entire island. Uh, yeah, not environmentally friendly. Uh, either way, you generally have to generate income to support your operations. The AI manages what resources you get. Um, and of course, that's with with uh, respect to industry. You could go the tourism route to generate your income with airports and ferries, hotels, theme parks, and all of that. You get the idea. Pretty sure you can see why people get the idea this was related to Sim City, but it actually is not. It uh, completely different franchise. But uh, let's dive in and take a look. So you get all these different islands. And I don't remember what all of them are. Info. Mission is discover a rare, perhaps near extinct species and ensure its survival. You must then export 100 specimens to, yeah, this is one of those sort of environmentally friendly ones. Yeah. So we'll close that one out. And... Oh, yeah, there's a mystery one down here. You generally have no idea what that one is. Choose this island to generate a random landscape. There's no specific mission on this island, but the opportunity to explore, manipulate an unpredictable environment. Please note this might take a few minutes on a slow machine. I don't think we're going to have that problem. This was, again, in 1995. Uh, what was the info? We'll just randomly pick a couple and look at them. Stay rich and happy. Your task is to make 120,000 EMUs, by the way, is the monetary, I forget what it stands for, is the monetary whatever that they use in this island chain. Uh, but you have to keep population happiness above 75% and world opinion above, I think that's 60%, and you only have nine years to do it. Yeah, that one was interesting. Um... United Nations has put you in charge of an important mission. Native culture on this island is underdeveloped. You've been charged with bringing them into the 20th century, tells you how old this game is, by raising their efficiency to 90% while ensuring world opinion is at least 75%. You must have two cities, each with a population of 13,000 and an average happiness of 70% in six years. Yeah, they get interesting. Pick one more at random. Small, underdeveloped isle of your own, but you don't want to pollute it, so you've decided to base your industry on the isle on this island instead. Increase your industrial score to 15% within six years in order to provide the goods that your own island needs. So basically, you're trying to create an island that is completely self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. So, all right, let's uh, hit play. All right, so here's our agents. And we have Bob, who has industrial and construction skills. Close that. We have John, who is industrial and criminal contacts. That's fun. We have Ian. I think that's Ian. Local ecology, flora and zoology. D is negotiation and employment. Matt is local ecology. 
Rick is Flora and Exploration. Yeah. And Ra uh, Paul, I was about to say Raul, is Industrial and Employment. Okay. And Billy is Negotiation and Local Culture. So here's the deal. You, I think the blue one is Headquarters. Nope, Iron Mine. And green? Nope, Power Station. Boy, there's a lot I don't remember about this. Oh, there's HQ. So we can hire and fire and train agents who can improve their skills. Uh, there are eight agents here. Agents doing nothing. Yeah, no wonder. We just started. Please, give me a break. So, we need to score graph notebook, files and options. Okay. And we need world opinion is 100% population happiness, industrial score. I have completely forgotten what it was we were supposed to be doing. Ha! That's not good. Uh, score development. Okay. Oh, wait. This was the one with the... Uh, with the... Um... Oh, for crying out loud. This was the one where we have to, like, find the... The creature. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we want to... Who's our explorer? Was that him? That was him. So we need to send him just kind of somewhere. I need... Ah, move. There we go. And we'll send him over there. And he's off and moving. And then... What's this? Coal mine. Mind to date. Okay, we want to... Who's our industrial? We'll send you there. Yeah, we'll send you there. There we go. We got one guy there. Yay! And we need... We got coal. We got iron. Yeah, we need iron. We had somebody else who was industrial. Who do we got? Who do we got? We got John. Local Ecology. Exploration. He's busy. <laughs> Industrial and Employment. Yeah, we'll send you over there. That works. There we go. They're there, so we can now... No, I can't, huh? Okay. Uh, we'll close that, and what all we got here? We have village. We have a village. I need somebody there. Uh, who do I have for... I think I just... Oh, there we go. So, wait a minute. We need to... Village number one? Yeah, we'll send you over there. Yep, there we go. And then we sent you that way. And nope. And nope, you're out in the middle of the jungle looking around. Uh, you're over at the power, at the iron mine, and you are negotiation and local culture. Um... I'm thinking we'll send you there. Yeah, there we go. And what are you? You are a logging company. And you are a sawmill. And you are another logging company. Acres of trees cared for. Okay. So we need, we're going to need wood. Export, import materials, deconstruct, huh? Number of trucks here. 
Uh, I wonder what I do with it. What's this? Another village. Yay. All righty. So. And. New village. Batch train. Increase welfare. Well, doesn't seem to be, he is, Billy Tell is doing nothing. Why is he not training anyone? Billy, ah, wrong guy. I want, wait a minute. Train. Yeah, there we go. Efficiency went up. Food stock went up. Yay! He is training. Yay! Efficiency. Yeah! What am I negotiating? Awaiting the arrival of a fishing boat? That was negotiating? You waiting? You negotiated the arrival of a fishing boat? Huh. All right. Interesting. All right, so let's send Billy over to this village. Wait a minute. What? No, that wasn't. Who did I just send over there? Uh, Billy was over here, right? No, Jarvis is over there. Ah, wrong guy. Yeah, you can see how kind of wild... Where's... Wait, Jarvis? There's no Jarvis. Oh, D. D was over there. Ah, yes. Anyway, you can see how involved this game can get. It's, uh, not as easy as it looks. Okay, so we will... Train. No, why is he not training? Batch train... Well, now I'm confused, because he's supposed to be like my training guy, wasn't he? Negotiation and employment. But what am I supposed to be... Oh. Yeah, the wiki... Well, hang on. Oh, there we go. Villages, batch training increases efficiency. Efficiency rises, population rises. Once it reaches 140, you can force the village to provide unskilled labor. Oh, so the population's got to get up. Okay. Uh, people... Within the subconscious of the populace, pipe dream is being cultivated. The people will live in equality of affluence with their masters. This has rarely been the case in 2,000 years of the history of world conquest. So you can clearly see that the point of this game, even in 1995, was about uh, the evils of capitalism and the evils of the almighty dollar and the evils of industry. And nothing is that simple. OK, let's just leave it at that. It. Uh, Every political system has its downfall from feudalism to communism to capitalism. They've all got good and bad sides. But to paint one as completely evil while not painting the rest and, and, and revealing their evils, that's just plain stupid. Uh, my opinion, take that for what it's worth. Uh, but anyway, you can see that this game is actually pretty involved, pretty... It's not easy. It is not easy, and it is fun. I enjoyed the heck out of this game all the time that I played it. So, uh, yeah. But with that, I want to thank you for spending your time with us today here at the Chartreuse Leprechaun. We're going to call this an episode. We really do appreciate your time. We really do. Also, as I said at the beginning, hit that like button, subscribe, set yourself up for notifications so you don't miss anything around here. But above all, always, always, always remember, if you see it, and you can't quite explain it, you can be sure the Leprechaun did it. Now you have yourselves a great day, and we will see you here next time on The Chartreuse Leprechaun.
Bye-bye.